Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel for part 3 of our G1000 series. Coming up on today's episode of 2020 Flight Simmers. Welcome back. In today's episode, we will cover how to enter your flight plan into the G1000. We will not be going over how to create a flight plan. If you would like more information about that, I've done a video on how to create a flight plan with Little Nav Map. I will post that down below in the description. If you missed part one of this series, I go over who the series is geared towards, as well as the structure for how the series will play out. I will post a link down below in the description, or you could click up here to watch that video. Before we hop in the cockpit, I just have one disclaimer. I am not a pilot, so I will not be going over any procedures throughout the duration of this series. The aim of this series is to help you understand the G1000 and all of its functions. If you have any comments or questions along the way today, post them down below in the comments section and I'll get right back with you. And if the video helps you out, be sure to hit that subscribe, tick on that little bell, and smash that thumbs up button. It is greatly appreciated. Before we start this process, I thought I would just show you the flight plan that we're going to be entering in the G1000. For today's flight, we will be departing KNQX on our way to KMCO Orlando International. All right, so the first thing that we need to do to start entering our flight plan is get to the flight plan menu. Now we have a couple different ways in which we can do that. We can either hit the flight plan button down here on the lower right, or we can use the outer FMS knob to scroll through the different menus at the bottom. Microsoft Flight Simulator has already taken the liberty of entering our departure airport, so we don't have to do that. Now, the next thing that we need to do before we start entering any en route waypoints or procedures or anything, I always like to enter our destination airport first. We need to get the cursor to populate on our flight plan. To do that, we're going to use the inner FMS knob. We're going to press in and now you will see the cursor populate on the screen. We'll now use the outer FMS knob to scroll down to the destination, and you want to make sure you come down one line below destination, and then we can roll on the inner FMS knob, and that will allow us to then input our waypoint. Now, for entering information here, we have one of two ways in which we can do this. We can either use our FMS knobs at the bottom to enter our waypoint information, or we can use the keyboard icon at the very top. We'll go ahead and use that for today. Once you have your waypoint input, we can then hit the enter button on the lower right of the GPS. That will then confirm our destination airport. Now you will also get a pop-up asking you what runway you want to arrive on. Now, if you're unsure of which runway, you can just select none. But for us, we know we're gonna be entering on 17 left. So we'll just use the inner FMS wheel to scroll down to 17 left, and then we'll hit the enter button to confirm and enter one more time. So now that we have our destination and departure airports, what I like to do is enter my flight plan in order from here out. So the next thing I would do would be to enter our departure information from KNQX. To enter a departure, we need to go down and enter into the procedure menu. To do that, we will hit the procedure button on the lower right, and here we have a couple different options. We'll use our FMS knobs to scroll through these. You will go down and select departure. Once highlighted, we can hit the enter button, and that puts us in our departure menu. You will see the departure airport at the very top, so we can confirm that. And now it's asking us which departure we would like to use for today. We are going to be using the Tiger 4 departure, so we can just hit the enter button there. Next up, it's going to ask us which runway we want to depart on, and we're going to be using 04 for today's flight. So we will just confirm that by hitting enter again. Below this, you will see all the sequence of waypoints along this departure route. You will then want to scroll through all of this all the way down to the load button using the FMS knob, and then you want to confirm by hitting the enter button. At this point, we can now start entering our en route waypoints. We need to get the cursor brought back up so we can highlight the en route section. To do that, we'll press in on the inner FMS knob, and now we can scroll down to the en route section. Once we're here, we can use the inner FMS knob to roll on, and now we can enter our waypoint information. Again, I'll use the keyboard button at the top, and we'll type rigor. 
Oh, one other thing. I know some people may ask for the actual flight plan. I'll post a link for the flight plan down below in the description. And once you have this waypoint entered here, we're going to go down and hit enter to confirm. And now as you see, rigor has appeared in our flight plan. If you wish to delete the waypoint, all you need to do is highlight the waypoint you wish to delete and then hit the clear button. You can also achieve the same thing by hitting the menu button as well and then deleting the waypoint. Now we're going to enter an airway from the rigor waypoint. To do this is going to be a little bit different from entering an en route waypoint and that we're not going to be using the FMS knobs at the bottom. To enter an airway, we're going to hit the menu button over on the right hand side. And as you see here, we have several different options. At the very top, load airway is our prime option, and that's what we're going to use. Now, if for some reason your cursor was not highlighted over load airway, you can then use your FMS knobs at the bottom to scroll over the correct option. Once you have selected, we're going to hit the enter button, and now we're going to enter our airway into the rigor waypoint. To do that, we're going to use the inner FMS knob to start scrolling, and that'll bring up the various airways that we can choose. We're going to highlight the Victor 225, hit the enter button, and now it's going to ask us for an exit waypoint off of the Victor 225 airway. So again, we're going to use the scroll knob at the bottom to start scrolling through. Our exit waypoint for today is going to be RSW. We're going to highlight that with our cursor and then hit the enter button to confirm. Below this, you'll see the sequence of waypoints along this route. We're going to use the FMS knob to scroll through that down to the load button. Once you're here, we're going to hit the enter and that will then load the entire airway into our flight plan. We scroll down a little bit, you'll notice all the various waypoints that are going to be along this airway. Now, if you have a very long flight plan, this could make it very confusing to look at once you add multiple airways. So we have one little trick up our sleeve here. If we go up and highlight the airway, we can then hit the menu button, and now we have an option to collapse the airway. We can hit enter, and now the only waypoints that you see is your entry waypoint, the rigor waypoint, and the exit waypoint, nice. the RSW. So now that we have this finished, the next thing that we need to enter is our arrival information. Again, to enter a procedure, we're going to hit the procedure button on the lower right, and then we're going to go down and select arrival. Once that's done, we can hit the enter button. We're going to use our FMS knob to scroll down to our arrival, which we're going to be using the Mini 5 for today. Hit the enter button to confirm, and now it's going to ask us for a transition. The transition waypoint for today is going to be the RSW waypoint which is also the waypoint that we are exiting our airway. We can hit the enter button. Below here will give us the sequence of waypoints along this arrival. Scroll all the way down to the load, and then we're gonna hit the enter button to confirm. Now we can take a look at our flight plan to make sure everything is entered properly. Now one thing you'll notice here on the arrival is that we do not have any flight restrictions over here on the right hand side. Now that's only because this arrival in particular does not have any flight restriction altitudes. But if your arrival does, all of your flight restrictions will populate to the right and they will also be in the cyan color. Okay, the next thing that we need to enter is our approach information. To do that, we're gonna go over to the procedure button one more time and then we're gonna highlight select approach. Once there, hit the enter button, and now we can start entering all of our approach information for Lando International. For today's approach, we will be using runway 17 left, and we can use the FMS knob to scroll through all the various approaches, but for today's flight, we're gonna choose ILS 17 left, and then we can hit the enter button on the right-hand side. Now it's gonna ask us to pick a transition for the ILS approach. Now here's where this can confuse some people, so I want to explain what you should and maybe should not use when it comes to a transition. The first thing I want to show you is what is going to happen if we input a vectors transition into our flight plan. Now this will also apply to if you activate a vectors to final in the procedure menu. I'll show you that here in just a second. But for right now, let's highlight vectors. We're gonna hit enter to confirm. 
Once that's done, it's going to now populate us in the minimum section for that runway. To turn the minimums on, we're going to use the FMS knobs at the bottom. As you'll notice here, we only have an option for barrow minimum. What that means is the value that we're going to enter to the right is going to be an MSL number. So make sure your altimeter is set properly for landing. For this, I'm just going to enter any arbitrary number just for demonstration. Below this, we have our primary frequency for the ILS. One thing the G1000 will do is it will auto populate this frequency in our NAV1 standby. Now it's only going to do that once we hit the load button at the bottom. So let's go ahead and do that. Again, we're going to scroll through all the different sequence of waypoints. Go down to load. We're going to hit the enter button. Yes to the lawyer language. And if you take notice of the NAV1 standby, we now have our ILS1 frequency programmed. Now once you enter your approach, the G1000 should automatically switch that to your active frequency. But if it doesn't, all you need to do is to hit the swap button and it will now swap that frequency over. So now that we have entered this approach, let's go down and show you what it's going to look like on the G1000. Scrolling down to the approach section of our flight plan, one thing that you will notice here is the only waypoint that you see is the COCUS final approach fix waypoint and we only have the flight restriction at that waypoint. Now this can be pretty problematic, especially if you have multiple step downs along your approach. Now let's take a look at the approach chart, and if you look in the profile section here below, you will see four different waypoints before our final approach fix. Each of these waypoints has its own altitude restriction. So I hope you can see how using a vector's transition could be problematic for you because you will not have all of these altitude restrictions populate, nor will you have each of these waypoints populate on your screen. So now you might ask, well, what difference does it make if I have all of those waypoints populate or not? Let me show you scenario number two, and then I will explain to you why it's important to have all of this populate on our screen. So let's go back to the procedure menu. We're going to go down to select approach. Now also in the procedure menu, this is where you can activate vectors to final. So if ATC says, all right, we're going to vector you in and you go and click vectors to final, it will then show you all of the same information here without any of the flight restrictions. So just keep that in mind. Anyway, back to the procedure button. We're going to go down and select approach, hit enter, ILS 17. And now we're going to take a look at some of the other transitions that we have to choose from. Now again, this can be a little confusing, so let me just show you a very easy way to choose which one is going to be best for you. Before we can choose a proper transition, we need to take a look at our flight plan one more time. As you see here in green, we are going to be coming from the west into our approach. This information will be very important for choosing our transition to our approach. Now if we take a look at the very first transition that we have available, the Banya initial approach fix is actually going to be off to the east of the airport. So now that we know that we're going to be coming from the west, well Banya doesn't seem like a great option for us to use. So let's scroll down one. If we scroll down one, that'll put us at the Bosch waypoint, and that seems like a more viable option for us to use. We go down to our last initial approach fix. That will put us at the KAKEY waypoint. So now which one do we choose? We know that Banya is way out of our way. So it's either going to be Bosch, Hervey, or Keiki. So one more time, I just want to take a look at our approach chart. If we choose an initial approach fix at the HRVI waypoint, which is right here, then we are not going to be populating any of the previous waypoints to that nor are we going to be populating their flight restrictions. So what I want to do is to highlight the Bosch initial approach fix, and then we're going to go down and hit enter. Again, we can enter through the barrow, scroll all the way down to the load section, and then we can hit enter, yes to the lawyer language. If we take a look at our approach now, we have all of our waypoints along the approach route, as well as all of the flight restrictions. Notice one other thing that we have is a distance between each waypoint. That's going to be very critical 
to helping you know when you need to start your descent for your next waypoint or your next flight restriction. Now, if we activate vectors to final, look what just happened to our approach and to all of our waypoints that we had on that approach. So this is where it becomes problematic. If we scroll out on the screen now, you can see that we don't have any of those waypoints populated. So now let me go over why this can be an issue for using a vectors transition or vectors to final approach. Normally in a real life situation, air traffic control will be vectoring you. Now as a pilot, we don't know where they're gonna be vectoring us. Now you could always ask them, now in saying that, the air traffic control also expects us to know all of the flight restrictions on our approach. So for demonstration today, let's say ATC has vectored us all the way out by the Bosch waypoint. And then they turn it over to us to proceed with our landing and approach. Well, if we don't have any of our waypoints on our GPS, we will not know the flight restrictions, but you can say, well, I can just look at the chart you could pull up your approach chart and look at the approximate distance you are from the runway, and that'll kind of tell you when you'll be crossing over that waypoint. And there's only one caveat to that, and that is that you have DME information for your approach. If you don't, then you won't know when you're crossing each of the waypoints. Now, before we end the video, we have one more thing to go over, and that is entering our cruising altitude into our flight plan. Now, if you do not enter a cruising altitude, you will not effectively be able to use the VNAV, and that's because it won't be able to calculate your cruising altitude to where you need to start descending for your approach or your arrival. So let me show you how we're going to do that. The waypoint that I'm going to use to enter my cruising altitude is the rigor waypoint. Now, it is okay if you don't achieve your cruising altitude by this waypoint, we're just using this as a gauge for the VNAV. The only caveat to this is if you're using your VNAV for your ascent. I will get into that in a later video, in a more advanced video, but for the basics right now, I'm just gonna use rigor as my cruising altitude waypoint. So all we need to do is to go up to the rigor waypoint. We're gonna go over to our flight restriction altitude, and then we're gonna use the inner scroll knob to then enter our cruising altitude. Once we have that entered, we can hit the enter button, and then it will set that information into our GPS. You'll also notice to the right of that altitude, we have a little pencil icon, and that is just to let us know that we have manually edited this information. So this will now allow our GPS to calculate our VNAV profile all the way down into our approach. Now, as you see through our arrival now, we have many different altitudes that we're gonna be passing each of the various waypoints. And you'll notice that these altitudes are not in cyan and they are in white. So that just means that these are an altitude that we're gonna be crossing the waypoint. Remember, only the flight restrictions are going to be in cyan. Before we wrap up today's video, I just have one more thing I would like to show you. We go over to the menu button over on the right-hand side and give that a left click. Now that we have our flight plan completely entered into the G1000, we have several more options here that we can choose. At the very top, we can activate a particular leg of the waypoint. So to do that, you need to make sure that you have that particular leg highlighted that you would want to activate. And then you would just hit enter to activate that leg. We can put a hold at a certain waypoint. We will go over all these in a future video. I just want to show you what is available and what you can do. We can delete our flight plan. We can invert the flight plan. So let's say you go to a location and you want to fly the exact same flight plan in reverse. And at the very bottom, we have three more options that we can delete any procedure from our flight plan. All right, that's going to finish us up for today's video. If you have any comments or questions, post them down below in the comments and I'll get right back with you. If you enjoy today's content and found it useful, make sure to hit that subscribe, tick on that little bell, and smash that thumbs up button. To all my flight simmer friends around the world, keep the blue side up, and we will see you on the next one. Thanks for watching, everybody. If you would like to see part four of the series, click up here if it's available.